Oh my goodness, it has been a minute. I'm trying not to ramble on. The first live stream after you haven't for a while is always very rambly, but we're gonna stick to the topic and maybe we'll ramble at the end. So this topic is about why you can't find a provider or why some women can't find a provider while everyone else around you or maybe everyone on social media seems to be finding it. So what is the missing key and today we're here to talk about it. I haven't done a live in a while. You guys know I was moving and then kids back to school. Everything is all like kind of like settled in. And so I thought, okay, let's resume this. Let me know that you enjoy these live streams by giving it a thumbs up and letting me know in the chat right now. Also, um, soon I'm going to go back to doing chats only for our YouTube members. So this one was my first one back. So I did open up to everyone, but I'll try to take questions from my members first to show them my appreciation for supporting this channel. So I went to brunch with some of the girls from my Houston intensive. Some of the girls that came to that intensive live in Houston. We hit it off and we decided we were going to do these like we're doing this whole like sisterhood experiment and we're going to be meeting up for brunch and lunches and dinners and things like that. Well, one of the topics that came up during our brunch was this exact topic of why some women can't find providers while others can. And I thought, okay, this would be so great to discuss because this is really the missing key that a lot of people are kind of like missing. Duh, that's why it's called the missing key. <laughs> Hello, hi, oh my God, we've got a lot of people here saying this is their first live stream. That is amazing. I used to do these every day. I've, I did live streams every day for like years. So um, one of my fears with moving in and upgrading my house was that there's gonna be so many vendors and people coming in and out that I won't be able to live stream and I think I like manifested it. There's always someone here, either the housekeeper, the painter, like, and I feel like I can't live stream. So today people are here, but they're doing outside work. So we're back. So you know that saying, I'm sure you've heard the saying or this quote that the planes that make it, the plans that land do not make the news, right? Let me know in the chat or in the comments if you're watching this afterwards, have you heard the saying, right? So if you open up the mute, the news station that are YouTube news or whatever on any given day, you're not going to hear about the people that made it home safely. You're not going to hear about the people that didn't get shot that day. You're not going to hear about the children that didn't go missing. You're not going to hear about the planes that didn't crash, right? That's not news. That doesn't make the news. What makes the news is like the extremes, right? Like what makes the news is the disasters or the, the crazy on any extreme. The middle ground never makes the news. You never hear about it. So what in the relationship field, whether it's on social media or in your personal life, how many times do you hear about like the crazy narcissist guy, the abuser guy, the guy that like takes advantage of the girl, the, gu the guy that like cheats and he's a narcissist and like the extreme, right? Now on the opposite end of the extreme is the multi-millionaire, multi-billionaire that's like, you know, giving the life, like the luxury life to the woman, right? So you hear about these two extremes because that's what makes the news. That's what's exciting, right? You have shows like the housewives of whatever, right? Like that's what makes the news. So when women like you and I, who maybe didn't have, um, well, I grew up having lots of provider examples, but like women out there that did, that grew up having absolutely no examples of what a healthy relationship is supposed to look like, what a divine union is supposed to look like, what a man that provides it's supposed to look like, what his actual providing is going to look like. You've got these two examples. So you turn on social media and you hear about the cheaters and the narcissists and the dusties and all the guys not doing the thing. And then you also hear about these like multi-millionaire people that like you have to dress a certain way to impress and like you have to get into like high society and like you have to get all this plastic surgery and boob jobs and like you have to look like this Barbie doll to get this guy, okay? 
Well, the truth is that most people fall in the middle ground that never makes social media, it never makes the news, it is just your average everyday people that are being provided for. That's literally what we were talking about our, uh, at our brunch is that a lot of women that are being provided for, they're not even on social media. Like I have tons of family members, most of my family members on both sides of my family being completely 100% provided for, they do not even have social media accounts. In fact, a few of my cousins were really annoyed when their children's school made them sign up for a Facebook group because they just, they just don't like want to be on social media. So the average people are not on social media they're not showing up on the news they're not on reality tv they're they're just like living their best life okay they, what are they doing they're not working staying at home taking care their taking care of their kids if they have any going to brunches and lunches with their girlfriends going to yoga and pilates and like shopping and literally living their best life probably living your dream life, but you have no idea what that looks like, okay? So when you show up on social media and you see, um, you know, women that look like Barbie dolls that are, you know, filtered up, uh, have had all this work done, and, and then you think, oh my God, well, you know, I'm not that, and like now I can't, you know, maybe I don't have the money to do that or no desire to do that. Well, like I can't get a multimillionaire, like, do you see what I'm saying? Let me know in the chat if you understand what I'm saying, right? The truth is that most multimillionaires are average people, okay? If you read the book, which is one of my favorites, The Millionaire Next Door, you will see that the average millionaire looks nothing like the Instagram dude. Nothing, okay? Their wives do not look like the Instagram models either. In fact, I moved in to a million multi-million dollar neighborhood just last month you guys know we upgraded our house we moved into a very fancy neighborhood and guess what i am the most overdressed woman in this neighborhood when i leave my house people turn around to look at me because i'm just standing out like a sore thumb all the men in this neighborhood dress like irfan my husband jeans shorts flip-flops and a t-shirt or a polo like you if you saw the, these any of these men out on the street not in a million years would you be able to guess that these people are actually filthy rich and let me tell you what filthy rich means okay we're, we're like baby millionaires in this neighborhood they own diamond mines and steel companies like really really wealthy people like real wealth okay but they don't dress like old money which people talk about that old money no nope, they don't dress like that because they're not british they live in the united states they're immigrant uh most of them are immigrants and they are just you would not in a million years know that these were multi-millionaire families what do the women dress like okay they do not look like the reality tv show stars that you see on beverly hills or california they, that's what i was expecting let me just be honest with you i thought that i was going to move into this neighborhood and there's going to be barbie dolls everywhere around me that's literally what i thought okay i'm the the youngest wife in this entire neighborhood i'm 41 it's not like i'm in my 20s i'm 41 i'm the youngest wife and i'm so overdressed in this neighborhood this wearing a 20 dollars skirt from amazon and this express top i'm overdressed everywhere i go because the average american people like they're just we live in a very casual country okay most people do not look like instagram models have you even noticed that how many people do you see tell me where you live right now how many people do you see looking like instagram male models or female models or these like what you think money is supposed to look like i don't see any of these people in my life i live in houston texas maybe if i went to beverly hills or some fancy place in california i might spot a few um, I go to California quite often. I go to New York quite often. We have tons of family there. I barely even there see those kind of people. So why am I telling you this? This is very important because when you are out dating, you think some flashy guy is going to show up 
with his like hundred thousand dollar watch and like you know armani suit or whatever suit they're supposed to be wearing that's just not how people are like everyday people are so your average provider guy is probably someone that makes i don't know fifty thousand dollars a year to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year and he has a twenty five thousand square foot home a decent car a 401k and he can give you a very good living but you're out here waiting for you know someone that looks like they belong in housewives of beverly hill to step up well i live in one of those neighborhoods this is the second most expensive neighborhood in houston and the one above it is just one one like subdivision down and people don't dress like this there either so do you, do you understand what i'm saying you don't even know what you're supposed to be looking for okay another thing i want to say is that the average american man i read this article a while ago i should have looked it up you could probably google it it was stats on wealth by age so an average american man doesn't even reach his peak like peak performing and earning years until he's in his 50s okay so a lot of you that are like in your 20s and 30s or dating men in their 20s and 30s are expecting him to look like the end the after picture when he's like in the middle of his journey okay so like for example when i met Irfan, i was just turning 28 and he was just turning 37 he had just turned 37 right i knew that he had the potential to be a multimillionaire because of his job his investing the way he was going right was he multimillionaire when i married him nope was my husband even a millionaire when i married him nope he wasn't i think he, he, we hit our first million a month after my my daughter was born so that was like four or five six years into the marriage but if you're like no he has to be this this and this right now because that's what i thought i saw on instagram or on youtube or on that docu series or whatever you're missing all the guys right you're missing all the guys that are actually in the right on the right track right but the minute you start talking about potential people go people like extremes they're like well my mama said not to marry a potential right we're not saying you're gonna go marry a homeless guy or a hobo or you know we're not we're staying away from the extremes we're staying away from the rock bottom extreme and we're staying away from the crazy lifestyle like that extreme because most of us are gonna find someone in the middle okay i found someone in the middle an average guy right who he by his profession he had a master's degree in engineering he was not working as an engineer he's still not working as an engineer but that's his degree and so he's a lean six sigma expert a process improvement expert right has a corporate job and does Irfan look like the Instagram model guys or or old money or or even new money no because even the term old money and new money are extremes we've got extremes again we've got one extreme is like you know old money and we've got one extreme new money well guess what okay what about all the people in the middle okay what about the people that live in my neighborhood that some of them are old money some of them are new money but they're american they're american immigrants a lot of them and they're not british and they don't dress like old money and they don't dress like new money they just dress like you and i the average person okay well if you've been sitting around social media long enough you're not even gonna turn your you, and like look at these people you're not gonna know that they are filthy rich they're filthy rich but you don't know that because that's not what you're trained to think wealth looks like or providing looks like or what like it's supposed to be so anyways i'm gonna stop rambling see what you're saying i think i missed a super chat thank you so much babe i don't did you have a message you didn't have a message but i appreciate that okay i'm gonna try to catch our members in here hi hi uh, coach she said everyday people wearing leggings every day yep 
And that's what I have never, let me, let me give you an example. In my new neighborhood where it's all multi-million dollar homes, in order to eat, everything costs four times as much. That's, that was a sticker shock for our fun when we first moved in. So lawn mowing, four times as much, okay? Like you call a contractor to do anything in our old neighborhood versus our new neighborhood. He was like, everything is like four times as much. Our water bill was like $100 a month over there. It was $800 here. Like everything is like four times, at least four times. So you can't like fake rich in this neighborhood. You just can't, okay? You can't just like mortgage your home. Like just the tax, I think the ta the property taxes are probably like $4,000 a month or something. You can't fake your way into this neighborhood. So these people are the real deal. Some of the wealthiest people in Houston, right? I have never seen any woman wear anything other than loungewear, like uh, athletic wear. No, none. I saw one woman taking a walk wearing white shorts and a tank top. And that was so dressed up for this neighborhood that it made me like do a double take. I was like, yay, someone's dressed. Okay, that's it. So when you are thinking that it has to look a certain way, what that does is it actually gives you a limiting belief too because you're thinking you have to like go out there and like do all this like surgery or put all this makeup on. Like honestly, I wear makeup for YouTube, right? So the makeup that I do, um, I used to wear, I mean, I wear makeup anyways, but the makeup that I do, used to do before YouTube was a little bit less because it was like everyday makeup, right? On the camera, when you come on camera, everything gets a little watered down. You need brighter lighting, you need brighter colors, you need brighter makeup. This is just how, if anyone here is in video production or in the industry, the film industry, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You have to do a little bit more for the camera. But in everyday life, every single place I go to, any restaurant I go to in Houston, any shopping mall, any any place I go, any neighborhood, I am the most overdressed person every single place. If I see anyone more overdressed, more dressed than me, I'm surprised. In fact, uh, when I went to brunch with my students, which are, who are my friends now, they are also the most overdressed, right? So we're putting in the most effort. We're doing, like they they look like million dollar babes all around. They look like they belong in my neighborhood, okay? But the actual wealthy people, they're everyday people. And I can't stress this enough because here's what I'm trying to teach you, okay? The guy that you think is gonna be your forever guy, he's probably not gonna be wearing Gucci. In fact, I would consider that a red flag. That was a red flag in my eye. He may not be driving a fancy car, okay? He's gonna have a 401k. He's gonna have a property or money saved up to buy, a, buy you a property. He's gonna have all of his ducks in a row, so to speak. He's gonna be from a good family, good education, good stable job, 401k investments, you know, a big stock portfolio, maybe a couple of properties, but he's not gonna be wearing his money. He's not gonna look like old money and he's not gonna look like new money. He's just not. You think if it's not new money, it's old money? Those are extremes like we just talked about. He's gonna look like the average guy. In fact, in the United States, okay, in the United States, you cannot tell the difference between money and no money. You just can't, okay? I actually studied this at university. This was one of the things that was like extensively studied. My One of my professors was really passionate about this topic. And there's like many books on this topic too. They're probably dated now. I believe one of the books that I read, I believe the name was, this was at university, America's Rich Has Color TV, something to that effect. See if you can find it. I'll see if I can still find it. Maybe I still have it somewhere. But if you go to any other country, especially like third world countries, oh, you can tell the difference. In, in my parents' country, Pakistan, you can tell the difference between the wealthy and not wealthy. It's a big difference to tell, okay? So I'm sure this is the same if you're an immigrant to the United States or maybe your parents were, I'm sure you could tell as well. Well, in the United States, we don't have old money and we don't have new money in the way that you think it's going to be. It, it doesn't look that way. Everyone is dressing similar. Everyone is, my, uh, 
my housekeeper drives a better car than my husband. Yes, I just said it. By the way, that car, oh my God, I have a whole story to tell you guys. Oh my God. I wasn't going to share this here. Side note, I wanted my husband to upgrade his car. I tried everything. I tried feminine energy techniques. I tried manipulation techniques. I tried threatening him. I tried everything, okay? Okay. My son always laughs when I'm like, I tried threatening your dad to upgrade the, the car. He's just like, no, this is the car that I drive. He's, he drives a Chevy, by the way. I drive a Lexus and my son dr drives a Toyota Camry. So I was like, N now that we're moving into this neighborhood, I like amped it up trying to get him to upgrade his car. Nope, the guy just wouldn't budge. This car, this house came with two Tesla chargers like built in. I was like, that's a sign that you need to get that Tesla. Nope, he's not gonna budge. Finally, I was just like, I'm just gonna let it go. I'm gonna surrender. He's, I'm gonna let him. I'm just gonna accept my husband for who he is. He's not a flashy guy. He doesn't wanna upgrade his car. I'm just gonna let it go. I literally wrote in my journal that I just let this go. He's not gonna whatever, right? I accept that he's just going to drive the Chevy for the rest of his life, okay? <laughs> Two days ago, right when I let this go, the Chevy was parked outside in the driveway. We were having our garage painted and it got struck by a lightning. Yes, yes, you heard me correctly. It got struck by a lightning and yesterday, Irfan was like, maybe, maybe it's time that I upgrade that car. I just, I was just like, <laughs> I was like, God, <laughs> uh, when I said I just accept him and I surrender and I'm going to manifest it anyways, I didn't mean for you to like strike it with lightning, but I'll take it. <laughs> so anyways, there's literally someone outside right now with Irfan trying to see what we're going to do with that car. Anyways, I was manifestation. You manifest it anyway. So side, side story right there. Okay. Uh, I don't know how I got sidetracked to that story, but I just thought maybe you needed to hear how freaking crazy manifestation is. Amber said, I just bought the basic bake bundle. I plan to buy more. You are a gift from God. I swear my life is changing and I can be the mom my daughter needs. So she, as she becomes a young woman, thank you. Thank you, Amber. I'm so happy to have you here and in the basic babe bundle. Thank you, babes. The great goddess said, this is so good. Thank you, babe. Thank you for the support. I appreciate you. Any, everything is possible. Yes, I know. It's crazy. I just couldn't believe it. When we had called AAA and they towed it to get like a diagnostic, like I was just like, what? What? Okay, let me see what you guys are saying about our topic. I'm trying to find our members first because this is supposed to be a members only chat. That's what I had promised. And then I just wanted to open it to everyone. Hi, Sonia. Welcome, babe. I'm looking for our members, seeing if they have any questions first, and then I'll take any other questions. But let me know if you understand what I'm saying, right? Like, for those people, like, okay, so you guys know I'm on Instagram. I created an Instagram account, I believe in March of this year. I hadn't been, I had been off of Instagram for a few years. And on Instagram, I literally just share like my lifestyle stuff. I'm going out to dinner with my family, you know, we're painting the garage, right? I bought this, you know, just like my outfits. Like I just share the everyday stuff. I can't tell you how many people DM me saying, thank you so much for sharing this. I did not know what a healthy family is supposed to look like and what it looks like. And it means so much to me. Here I am thinking, do people want to see me going out to eat every single day? Do they want to see me sharing my outfits every day? But I get so many of those comments from people saying, please don't stop sharing this. I need to see what a healthy family looks like. And here's the thing. I'm not living the Beverly Hills lifestyle, right? Like I just recently moved into a multi-million dollar house. Like it's all recent for me, right? Even then, even then, it doesn't look like what you would think it looks like. It looks like peace. It looks like sakun, my favorite word, right? It looks like my family and I laughing together, watching movies together, going to dinner together, kids swimming, barbecue. Like it looks like something you could do on any budget. Let's just be honest, right? It's not like, it's like, 
it's not shavi uh, caviar and champagne and like you know i don't know like naked ladies dancing like i don't know the stuff but you know what i mean like it doesn't look like that right my husband doesn't wear an expensive watch i just told you his chevy got struck by a lightning which was 12 years old he bought that car for me when uh ayan was born my middle son and then he a few years ago he bought me the lexus by the way the the this neighborhood some of the men do drive very expensive cars but most 100% of the wives drive very expensive cars and some of the husbands drive very expensive cars. Did you hear that, right? So even the husbands that don't drive nice cars, they've bought their wives nice cars, right? They provide, they are providers. So we think that if he's not showing up in a flashy car wearing a Rolex watch or dressed like I don't know some who dresses nice i don't even know i don't follow that kind of stuff but the instagram male model or old money or rich money or new money any of that stuff what about the medium people what about the average people the people that is are like you and i okay like we, that's what it's gonna be like so you need to be realistic on what it's going to look like. And then, of course, you can turn it any way you want to, right? Like I could dial up the glam as much as I want to in my life or dial it down. Like I have that freedom, right? I could choose to dress like old money or I can choose to dress like new money or I can just dress like me, right? Like it, like even where as much as I dress up, it's overdressing in most towns in Houston. I'm sure there's some towns in in california where i would be underdressed but i'm saying this because i think most women need to hear what it actually looks like realistically speaking thank you sonia i haven't seen you in a minute hey thank you for the super chat she said hi mina i have learned so much from you hey it's been a minute i'm so glad to see you Most wealthy people drive regular cars, hence the millionaire next door types. Plus, men love providing for their family. That is why they work so hard. So, and it's both, right? So in my neighborhood, I was a little self-conscious. I'm going to be very honest with you. When we moved in here, this is my first time buying, you know, our first, first time buying a multi-million dollar house, living in a neighborhood like this. And I was very self-conscious of the fact we have three cars. All of them paid off, purchased in cash. Uh, we have my my Lexus and then Irfan's Chevy and Armand's Toyota Camry. And I was like, oh my God, we're going to have the cheapest cars in the neighborhood. Like it's going to be so awkward. Like I was plain out awkward about it. Well, when I came here, yes, you know, the this neighborhood is full of expensive cars. It really is. The the cheaper car of our next door neighbor that they park outside is a hundred and fifty thousand dollar car so yes there are some expensive cars in this neighborhood but there are also nissans toyotas lexus right so a lot of people like the point is what i'm trying to say is that money is all about freedom the people in my neighborhood are so rich they don't care like if they want to buy an expensive car, they buy an expensive car. If they want to drive a regular car, they drive a regular car. Like our this now I remember how I got sidetracked. My housekeeper drives a more expensive car and a later model than my husband. My husband is a multimillionaire, right? She's she's not. But that's what I'm just telling you is that in the United States, you cannot tell the difference. It is very easy to buy cars and buy homes and and you know dress a certain way you can do it on any income here so if you think it's gonna look like this thing that you saw on a reality tv show or on instagram and that's what you keep looking for it it may look like that at some point for you but it may not right off the bat right for, like I was saying in the beginning, I didn't marry a multimillionaire. We became millionaires in the process, like on the journey. But if that's like what I, in fact, some of the men I was dating in my rotational dating were already multimillionaires, but we either didn't have chemistry or there was just something else missing. So I went for the full package of what I wanted, someone I was physically attracted towards, um, someone who had the potential, you know, to grow into that, all the other stuff and so i didn't get 
I have been watching a lot of you guys were suggesting I watch Indian Matchmaker. I did watch season one before. I just finished watching season two and I'm going to do a whole analysis on it. But as I was even seeing that show and seeing like what they're expecting right off the bat and as the, you know, the lady Indian Matchmaker, what she says is that go for 60, 70%. I, I agree with, I, there's some things I don't agree with her and I'll talk about that in the analysis, but that I agree with because a lot of things on my list were works in progress. Yes, I have them now, but Irfan and I had to do a lot of inner work to read to that state. We did not, and like neither one of us had the container for it. Irfan and I were both addicted to suffering when we got married and we've had to do a ton of inner work. So if you think it's gonna look like the after shot, well, it may be in the middle of the journey and you may be missing a lot of healthy men in the process because you think you're gonna get some weird filtered Instagram version of it. to chat is going so fast i can't uh, read any question without like losing i'm trying to find one that goes with this topic yes i desire such a man who buys a nicer car for his wife that's number one of the number one signs in fact when i was in real estate working with really really wealthy investors it was the same thing they would drive up in like paint covered ratty you know mini van type of cars or like pickup trucks and their wives would come in mercedes lexus bmw nice cars so if you're already thinking that he's gonna be driving that and doing that yeah some wealthy people do drive nice cars right but some don't some don't. I just gave you the example like of my husband, like even my husband's best friend, who's also a multimillionaire, he drives an Audi, but it's like 12 years old, right? Yes, he can go and upgrade his car every year, every couple of years. He has no desire to, right? He's taking care of his kids, his wife, like making sure they drive nice, nice, you know, she drives a nice car, everything is provided for. So the missing key here to recap is, is that most people have no clue what it actually looks like in a state of health. And you're going for this, like I, I have people saying six figures isn't enough. Like if he's making six figures a year, that's not enough. Well, then if you Google, look for um, average earning for men by age, well, then you're going to have to go in the 50s and 60s, right? Well, no, then you don't want a guy that's too old and he has to like look cute. I'm so glad that I got married before social media became such a big thing. Social media was obviously there. Facebook was a new thing. I don't, I don't think Instagram had existed because it wasn't even on my mind that I had to like flex my husband on Instagram or you know what I mean? Like it wasn't like a thing, right? I was literally marrying for what me and my now people are so self-conscious about what other people are going to say and what they can post and what it's supposed to look like that I think it's blocking them. It's really creating so much confusion for people. So if you, um, if you think that a man earning six figures even isn't even enough, then I'm going to ask you, you know, what's your inner work? How much of a container can you hold? And the thing is, when you have these kind of conversations with women, they say, oh, well, you're asking me to settle. Are you saying, no, of course you can have it all, but you, do you have the container for it all? Because if you don't have the container for it all, I hope you, it doesn't happen for you until you do, because you don't know what self-sabotage can actually do to people. I've seen myself and other people completely destroy their lives because they actually didn't have the container for what they desired, okay? So in the United States especially, you're gonna have to know if you live in the US, it is very hard to tell the actual healthy provider men and the men wearing designer clothes and all of that stuff 
I'm sure there are some healthy guys doing that, but there are so many unhealthy guys doing it that you're actually safer staying away because it's a, it's a numbers game, right? Most average healthy men are, especially in certain age group, I talked about this in the Divine Union, there is stages to male providing. They're not going to be concerned about driving an expensive car. They're going to be concerned about advancing in their career, saving up for a mortgage, you know, pay, investing enough in their 401k that's what they're going to be concerned about so you have to understand what you're actually looking for the great goddess said what is your advice for a young 29 year old black american woman courting for marriage it's the same advice for every other woman know that dna is so far superior than what you have been told and that you know we were actually discussing this two of the um two of the ladies at our brunch were african-american or actually immigrant immigrant african-american so i don't know how they would consider themselves because they're they have immigrant backgrounds however we were talking about how um there's so many limiting beliefs about different cultures and like this culture man doesn't provide and this culture man doesn't provide the truth is there will be predators in every culture and there will be providers in every culture this is just a fact okay i have an audience here from representing pretty much every country on this globe every culture and let me tell you there are non-providers in every cultures predators in every cultures and providers in every culture like that's just a fact but if you have the lens of like men won't provide for me because of my culture or my background then that's what you will show up so my advice for women of all culture especially african-american culture because you're you're asking me is that know that there is a lot of limiting beliefs about what marriage is supposed to look like for you and how a provider is supposed to look like or not supposed to look like and get yourself out of those beliefs and look at even if for a moment you have to look at other cultures or and and look at what the homo sapien male does okay and what the homo sapien female does because that's your dna that's what you're capable of and what he's capable of and then epigenetics comes in so whatever you think about surround yourself with how you act believe what your your core's way core like frequency is and ways of being that's what you will activate in yourself and other people so have the right mindset okay if you're not finding what you're looking for keep changing location meaning a different type of group meet new people completely different set of people okay that would be my advice but my work is universal because it's evolutionary and it goes beyond culture because of that fully provided wife here marry the less less flashy most hard worker man you can find look for intelligence ethics and generosity my husband is a relentless worker and I live like a queen. Thank you so much for sharing that testimony with us. This is what most, a lot of women need to see and hear. And the thing is, babe, I don't know if, the, like, if are you on social media showing this? So then people are thinking, oh, that's what it's supposed to look like. I'm going to guess probably not because most people that are just living like queens and having everything done, they're just living their dream life, right? And I hope you are because people need to see that. But most women don't even know. They think that they have to now turn into Barbie doll because Ken is going to arrive and provide. In fact, from my experience, maybe this is one of my limiting beliefs, but what I've seen is the flashier the guy, the more money he needs to spend on his own lifestyle to maintain it the less he'll be generous with you because he's got to maintain his flashy car and his Rolex and his expensive lifestyle so he can flex all that stuff on Instagram. It's not about you. It's a him mimicking providers versus being one. That's what I do since no example of what I desire for a provider. I surround myself with elder black americans that amplify such and other cultures especially when i lived in a big city beautiful you know what i've seen is that if you have um a lot of immigrant families around you from any country you're gonna you're gonna see more of the providers there because they haven't forgotten 
um, their way as much. They haven't like lost their traditions and cultures. So if you can frequent um, more of those kind of neighborhoods, in fact, you know, a lot of advice I hear in the feminine energy community or on YouTube is to go to expensive neighborhoods. I'm going to play devil's advocate here and say, go to immigrant neighborhoods because just to see modeling of what it's supposed to be. I grew up surrounded by immigrant families and so that's what I saw, right? In fact, it was more of a shock to hear about the 50-50 thing because I hadn't seen that. And instead of hanging out in like expensive neighborhoods thinking you're gonna land your guy there, most multimillionaires are married anyways, right? Unless you're getting a divorcee, because if you look at the average age of a multimillionaire in the United States, it's it's after the 50s. We are the youngest couple in this neighborhood. We are the youngest. My husband is 50. I'm 41. We are the youngest couple. So you have to really, like, we're baby millionaires, honestly, in this neighborhood. Everyone's older. They've got grown kids. They have grandchildren. So I, I'm just trying to tell you what, the numbers look like and what they are. And I'm not trying to like, like take away your desires or your dreams. I'm just telling you what it actually looks like. So when it lands in your face, you know what you're supposed to be looking for. You're not chasing this imaginary dream that it's just, just like the stats and the numbers just don't match unless you can go higher. Maybe you're an older woman and you're willing to go into the 60s, right? That Then yeah, you have a higher chance of getting a quiet millionaire like that. But I'm just saying that if you expect a 26 year old to be a multimillionaire, there's very few of them. And even if you find that, that guy, he's gonna be, if you have my divine union course, he's in a stage where he's not gonna be ready for marriage. Even if you're the right girl, he's not going to be ready. Your perspective has helped eliminate limiting beliefs. I'm so happy to hear that, babe. Speaking of changing location, my bosses provided me with relocation approval, flights to my new state and helped me move. Providers can also be men we aren't dating. Absolutely. Congrats on that, by the way, babe. I'm so excited for you. And absolutely, providers are all around us and they come in all shapes and forms and, and non-romantic relationships, absolutely. I completely agree. The other thing we were talking about that brunt, similar, you know, kind of taking this to the next point is that since I moved to this house, we've interacted with all these new people, whether it's vendors or contractors or all these people, right? Well, you know, when I'm talking to someone, oh my God, this is going to make me sound like such a nosy old lady. Oh my God, but I'm having to share this. With <laughs> I can't believe I'm sharing this. Okay. So when I'm, when I have a minute with anyone, I, okay, I'm not like blunt or in their face, but I somehow try to get the conversation to find out where this woman is at or where this guy is at. Is he providing? Is he married? Is he dating someone and like leading her on. I don't know why. I'm always just, that's my thing. It's my work. And so the conversation sometimes, I'm always, by the way, side note, if I find out that a guy has been dating someone for like seven, eight years, before they leave that conversation, nine out of 10 times, I've convinced them to pop the question. So I have a purpose for doing this. And um, somehow I steer the conversation there. So anyways, we've learned our plumber that came in to help us with some of the things in this new house, he's providing for his wife full, okay? Our guy that cleans our aquarium, we have a beautiful aquarium. We just got some new fish in it too. He comes in uh, every month to clean the aquarium. He's providing fully for his wife, okay? Our electrician, he owns this small uh, electrician kind of business. He's got him and a team of three, and he's our electrician from our old house as well. So we've known him for a long time. He fully provides for his wife, okay? None of these guys drive flashy cars. In fact, the aquarium guy drives a big old beat up pickup truck because he's got all this fish equipment in it, right? Like all of this cleaning equipment. Um, the other guy, we hired this one guy to clean our um, our chandelier and it was one that we you needed like a professional. And so this guy, he's like in his late 60s, he learned uh, how to clean chandeliers and like repair them in Las Vegas, been doing this for a long time. Guess what? 
he's fully providing for his wife. But the thing is, none of these guys were driving flashy car. They don't even have what my son calls a flashy title or a job. Okay, if you meet any of these men, you would hear, oh, he's a plumber, or he's an electrician, or he cleans chandeliers. They provide fully for their wives and their children, for their wife and their children. Do you, do you see? So we're letting go of all of these amazing people because we think it's supposed to look a certain way. In fact, someone commented on one of my videos saying, well, Mina's husband is just an engineer, so if, he, if she stopped working, they'd run out of money. Well, here's the thing. My husband has a master's in engineering. He's not an engineering by his, his work, but thank God he's an engineer because th the most number of millionaires are engineers, one of the highest numbers because of the way that they think. And my husband reached reach financial independence. That means you don't have to work another day for the rest of your life two months, three months before I launched my business. So if I stopped working and he stopped working and neither one of us earned another dime for the rest of our life, not another dime for the rest of a life, neither one of us would ever have to work, right? But you would have met my husband and said, he's just an engineer. He had all of the fixings of becoming a multimillionaire. In fact, I feel like him reaching financial independence, if you, if you guys remember, we, re, we were on the Dave Ramsey show, like it was a big celebration in our life. We had, you know, uh, this was a big goal of ours. This was, um, I don't remember the year, but if you search for my Dave Ramsey video, my inner funds, Dave Ramsey video, we're in there, right? So when I started my business, we already had $2 million invested. And if you search for the FIRE community and the 4% rule, you will know that when you have a certain number of uh, a certain number invested and you live within that 4% rule, your money never runs out. So I'm telling you this because you, you can have the desired lifestyle that you want at any job. It's not about your job. It's how much you're able to keep and invest. And it's about the guy being healthy enough to want to provide for you. There are a lot of flashy men out there that look very rich that don't want to provide because they are not healthy. They haven't reached the man, man status, which is to, to, um, uh, to give more than they consume. That's one of the pillars of masculinity. So the divine masculine. So if um, you're marrying someone who looks very wealthy, but he's not a healthy man. He's not going to provide for you. A plumber, you're better off with a plumber who's going to provide for you. Okay. So, or an electrician or an engineer, right? I, I was luckily smart enough to know this. I wasn't very smart in a lot of other things, but I was very smart because I saw in my family that there were all kinds of men. It didn't matter that whether it, you know, there's doctors that provide and doctors that don't provide. Plumbers that provide and plumbers that don't provide, right? So don't think that it has to look a certain way. Oh, hi, Tess. Sherry said, would you be willing to show us your fish tank? Girl, I'm always showing it on Instagram stories. If you're not following me on Instagram, you need to be following me there because I am obsessed with Instagram stories and that's where I share my like behind the scenes, outfits, shopping, dinners, my family's in there. I don't get to do that as much on YouTube because you know, here I'm more live streaming and videos. But if you're on there, you've seen all my fish. By the way, we got three new, three new ones. They're so cute, they're baby fish. I'll show you guys soon. A plumber is the best type to have. In fact, plumbers and electricians were mentioned in the Millionaire Next Door book because how a lot of them are millionaires. They're quiet millionaires. They're the millionaires next door because they're not required to have flashy lives. And because they're not required to have flashy lives, they're able to save and invest more. Okay, that's why my husband and I had made, we have this code, one of our codes, Okay, I was gonna actually do this video on my other channel, the Million Dollar Babes channel. One of our codes is that no matter what happens, no matter what happens, no matter who's earning who or what's happening, where we're working or not working, that we will always, always, always save more than 
80%, more than 80% of our income. So we, we really, really, really live below our means because when you live below your means, you're able to invest so heavily. That's how wealth is created. That's how generational wealth is created, right? So the men that are actually on their way to being millionaires and multimillionaires are not flashy men. They're just not. There's very few that are, very few. By the way, my bosses are all happily married and fully provide for their wives. Mina says providers provide across the board. They do. They do. I've had a few clients express concern about this saying, well, he provides for me, but like he wants to do this for his mom or his sisters. You, you have to accept the full range. Providers do provide for everyone, but that makes me feel good. For example, I live in a neighborhood surrounded by these really wealthy immigrants a lot of them are immigrant and providers right so this is kind of funny but i have to say this so um my i'm i'm pakistani american and pakistan is a it's a newer nation it was actually it used to be a part of india and pakistanis are actually sort of hybrids of the middle eastern culture and the indian culture so we are like if you take like uh, this is kind of a funny joke of mine, but if you take an Indian and a Middle Eastern and like and, and had a baby, that would be a Pakistani person because we kind of get the best of both of the cultures. And when I moved here, um, our next door neighbor on this side is Indian and our next door neighbor on this side is Middle Eastern. And so we're sandwiched in and I'm like, oh my God, that represents like how we look on the map and like the, what I always talk about. So anyways, I feel so safe so safe knowing that not only is my husband a provider and my sons are being raised as providers, but I actually live sandwiched in with all these really amazing men that are providers because it gives society structure and grounded to have providers. In fact, I talked about this in the Savage Feminine course. I said that because so many women are careless with who they sleep with and just making babies all, you know, with all these predators, what's going to happen is the scary truth is that eventually we will, the, the predators will outnumber the providers. And I shudder at the thought of this. Like I literally have chills and goosebumps every time I say that, say that every time I say it because God, I hope I'm wrong. And I hope that women wake up. I'm doing my part. I'm showing up. I'm trying to wake up as many people as I can. But if we don't stop doing that, if we just keep, you know, sleeping with anyone and just making babies with all these predators and unhealthy men, I shudder at the thought, but one day we will outnumber the providers and even the providers won't be able to help them. Because right now what happens is if you have a child with a predator, you can at least find a, pred a provider to like help raise that baby and hopefully knock some, you know, good values into, you know, that whole union. But what happens when we outnumber the providers? Like I, I don't want to live in that world. That is a scary world. So I'm so blessed and, and thankful that I do live in, a, in a, in a state and a city where there are still those traditional values and there's a lot of providers around here because that makes me feel safe, okay? Allah, thank you for the super chat. She said, Mina, I'm dating this great guy that seems like a great provider. He had a very bad childhood trauma and abandonment. Do you think his traumas can reflect in our relationship long term? Uh, yes, every single person has something every single person has something okay so my husband had a lot of childhood stuff i had a lot of childhood stuff we worked through it there is no such thing as marrying like this extremely healthy person that has absolutely zero trauma and they've healed through everything unless you are also the reciprocal of that typically i see that more in older couples in, in my clients that are in their 50s and 60s, I'll see this, where they've gone through a couple of divorces, did the inner work, like they, they're they at that place where they're attracting the healthiest of the healthiest people because they're the healthiest of the healthiest people. But if you have things that you still need to work through, you will attract that reciprocal. It's meant to be that way. Th this is actually healthy. We are meant to attract people that we're, that are the reciprocal of our wounds. So they can help heal us and we can help heal them. That's why I call it divine union. That's why marriage is known as the greatest spiritual inner work because of that. So I wouldn't trade that for the world. 
imagine it this way. When I was getting remarried, when I was in my, you know, I was 27 when I was looking, I was not healed. I was not 100% healthy, okay? I'm sure there were men in my rotation that were healthier than me. It didn't work out. Why? Because I was, I didn't have the container. Even when they wanted to give me everything and, and give me this lavish lifestyle, I wasn't ready for it. There were some guys in my rotation that could have given me all of what I have now then. I wasn't ready for it. So we always attract our reciprocal and that's a good thing. Be willing to do inner work with your husband. That's, that's what marriage is all about. Marriage is about doing inner work together. At some point, a lot of us get tired of doing inner work by ourselves and the next level of inner work, or not even tired, but like we've reached the peak of it. And then the next level is to be able to do it with another person, whether it's in a female friendship or in um, a divine union or with children, that's the next level. So I'm excited for you to do that with him. I've had that thought too about unhealthy men outnumbering providers in the future if we don't turn this around. This is the generation that we have to turn it around. That's why you see so much content, so much returning of the divine feminine. Like we're here to restore harmony now. Like balance needs to be done now. Okay. Oh, I got to talk about one thing before I continue. Two things actually. Okay, number one, I'm currently enrolling for my four ascensions atten uh, four, ascen four levels ahead ascension group coaching program. And every fall, I like to do some kind of a either private plus group or group coaching program. As the kids go back to school, we have a little bit more time to invest in ourselves. And often a lot of people will have goals that they really want to quantum leap before the end of the year. So this coaching program is for any woman that knows what she desires and wants to collapse time and make it happen a lot faster. So for example, maybe there's, you know, a divine union you're looking for or advancement in your business or health goals and you think you have to go in this very linear pattern. Well, in the four levels ahead, we're going to set the structures and containers and and um break through the limiting beliefs and blocks so that we can collapse all of that and make it happen a lot faster. It is open to all topics. I got a couple emails of people asking, is it just for business? Is it just for dating? It's it's whatever your goals are. So it's a general life coaching, uh, group coaching program. And how it works is that starting on August 22nd, we meet every two weeks for three months. So there's going to be six group sessions and then there's also a Facebook group chat for all of the members in this container. That way you can uh, kind of mastermind with each other. Um, you can do homework assignments together. You can learn and work together in groups if you find someone else is doing something similar to you. Um, so that's included. You also get three bonus sessions that were pre-recorded in a different group that are already in there. So. The card closes in four days, I believe. I'm offering it at a highly discounted price. I've never actually offered this price um, for years uh, since I've been teaching this work. So it's been a long time. Um, I wanted to offer something that people could get in on in a, in a group setting. There is an option to add private coaching. You're gonna have to email my team for that. That's at theuniverseguru at gmail.com. Also, there is a flash sale on the... Um, physics of femininity course that ends tomorrow, early tomorrow. So you're going to have to get on that. This is a very important course. The physics of femininity is my course on healing the feminine wound, the sisterhood wound. And it's also about feminine energy embodied, like how it looks like in your body. The sisterhood wound exercise, the sisterhood um, practice in there, it is life-changing. I get chills every time I talk about it. My entire life changed. I sent out an email to you guys yesterday. Whew, the kind of friends that I'm attracting now, the kind of sisterhood that we're having, it's so next level. I have chills even thinking about it. I never in a million years thought that my own people from my own community, my own students and clients would end up being those people that were my soulmate friends, but that's exactly what's happening. And I never, like this is the kind of sisterhood I craved my entire life and I finally have it. And one of the things we've decided to do together is I have this theory and I've had this theory for a couple years. I just didn't have the people in my life to practice it on. I wasn't ready. 
And I mentioned this to the girls at our brunch and they all said they're in. So I have this theory that my work and my process that I apply to growing in love, the intentionality, the inner work, the masculine and feminine polarity, all of my work, if you take it and apply it to female friendships, I believe that we will change the planet. Like all of the witch wounds, all of the sisterhood wounds, everything will change. So I pitched the idea to the girls at the brunch. At, well, I forgot to, I, on our group chat, we're on a uh, iPhone group chat now. And I told them, look, I have this theory that if you take my work and intentionally apply it to female friendships, that we can grow in love the same way we would grow in love in a marriage. And they all loved it. And they're like, we are in. So basically we're calling it the sisterhood template. We're going to practice it, grow in love together, be very intentional about doing the sisterhood so we're going to intentionally create best friend friendships the way they've never been done before and then i'm going to document that entire process and put it in the physics of femininity course because i think that this is very much needed it's a game changer i'll obviously i'll share stuff on youtube as well i'm super excited about it i really like at the pit like my womb gets excited and lit up every time i talk about this it also scares me because there is so much like sisterhood wound stuff in the collective also in my life <sighs> like it, it scares me but it excites me it's going to be amazing it's going to be amazing we're, we're putting in all of the i feel like god selected this particular group of women and we all came into each other's lives and in, in a very interesting way and this is the right group i feel like to practice this with so more is coming on that I'll, this is probably the first thing that i'll be sharing as i'm doing it versus like teaching it afterwards because i feel like i need to take you guys along on this journey this is so needed mina so excited to see hey lioness happy to see you babe it's been a minute I'm interested in it. I want to embody the feminine. Does the physics of femininity help with romantic relationships? All inner work helps with the romantic relationships because this is a course on feminine energy embodiment. So I want you to do it for yourself first. Let me tell you this. Even the sisterhood exercise in there helped my relationship with Irfan. So you would think, well, how would a sisterhood exercise help my relationship with Irfan? Because anything that holds us back anything that's lacking in our life, anything that we haven't healed affects all other areas of our life. And so when I healed the sisterhood wound through that practice, I noticed that the way that I was communicating with my husband changed, the way we were making eye contact changed, the way that I was confident changed. So much was impact because that little thing was like holding me back in all other areas. So 1000% to answer your question, all in our work, it's never wasted. It always quantum leaps all other areas of your life. I truly, truly believe that. My dad never made six figures, married my mom who already had two sons. We traveled the world and ate out often. I always felt very cared for by my dad. By the way, they've been married for 47 years. Babe, thank you for sharing that. That's an important story. That's exactly the topic of this, to this live is that those are the guys that we should be going for. And those are the guys that most of us have easy access to, but we're overlooking. And the good news is that you don't have to morph into Barbie to get that guy unless you want to be Barbie, right? Like we don't have to become some like other version of ourselves unless we want to, right? Like I do inner work and level up for me, but I can't imagine having to get surgery for someone else to get someone else. Like that, that that would make me feel really sad that would make me feel very sad i do my level up for me i dress up for me i do all my inner work for me and yes it enhances my relationship but to have to do it to get a man it doesn't sit right with me and i'm telling you you don't need to for the right guy the guys that you should be looking for the ones that are in in your field but you're overlooking because you think that they're not instagram worthy those are the guys ladies see i'm trying to find my members first i'm gonna um be doing more live streams but i'm gonna do them for our members 
like the chat's gonna open for the members. Everyone will have to live stream, obviously. Evidence is ha of having is wanting. Yes. It's the subconscious wanting, exactly. Someone said you should leave any male you don't feel safe around. I'm going to disagree with that for a moment. Um, yes, there's some men that are just creepy and you have a sixth sense. Um, I didn't feel safe around my husband and my oldest son for a really long time. In fact, I went to therapy for this. And I was telling my therapist, I said that when my oldest son um, turned into a teenager, something shifted in me and when he would walk into the kitchen like if he came in excited to tell me something i would jump and i told her that i experienced the same thing with my husband and as we were working together it came out that because the first sexual abuse that i encountered in my and when i was five years old was by a male babysitter he was a teenager and that when my son reached teenage years that something in my subconscious started fearing his presence and so when he would enter the kitchen i would jump out of my skin so do you think i was supposed to leave my son and my husband because i didn't feel safe around them no that was my own trauma i need to heal that okay so i did heal that i i went to therapy i hired coaches and mentors i had edmr done thank god i didn't leave your fun because i needed help feeling safe right? That was my inner work, okay? He wasn't doing anything to not make me feel safe. I had sexual trauma in my life. Of course, I'm not going to feel safe around men. So I, you know, sometimes you got to be careful with blanket statements like that, right? Because some of it is our own inner work, ladies. Thank you for sharing your vulnerability. That story about your son is very helpful. Thank you, Ella. I actually sat my son down and it was very awkward because I had never shared with him. Um, I, sh I told him he was, I think, 13 at the time. And I told him there was more to the story that I didn't want to share with him then because he was 13. But I told him that there had been some abuse in my life and that uh, his presence and daddy's presence sometimes triggered it and that it wasn't his fault or daddy's fault and that i was you know i, I would tell him i'm you know it's my it's my uh, call with my therapist like i showed him that i'm working through it and every week i would give him an update with my what my therapist has said and then when he was um when he turned 16 he said he wanted to hear more so when he was 16 i shared a little bit more and just recently this year we were on a trip together all of us and um, my younger two kids wanted to eat a different meal. So they ended up going to the buffet with Irfan and I, Irfan, Arman and I ended up going somewhere else and he brought it up. He said, you keep saying that there's like more to the story that you're not comfortable telling me until my 18. He's like, I'm going to turn 18 in a few months. He's like, I'm not trying to pry or pro, but I feel like if you just told me and got it out, we could just let it out. I could just witness you saying it. It would be very healing for you. You wouldn't feel like there's this burden on you that you have to share this thing with me later on. And then we could not talk about it ever again. So I took a deep breath and I said, you know what? You're right. You're ready. You are way more mature than the average like 17 year old. I'm ready to share it. And so I told him the whole t so I told him about the rape. I told him about like in more details about the childhood sexual abuse and all of that stuff. And he's, he sat there quietly. He witnessed it. He said, I'm sorry that you went through that. I it, it makes sense. A lot of the things that you've had to work through. And then that was the end of it. And I felt like such a relief because there was like always this thing on my mind that I have to like tell him this thing someday. So anyways, um, sometimes just having like someone just witnessed you where you're just being vulnerable is like so relieving. And it was important for me to share it with him because I didn't want it to be something that became his trauma or something that he took personally. He said, I can't believe what you've accomplished despite everything that happened in your life. He's like, I'm just really proud of you. And then we never talked about it again. So I really appreciated him. see so let me let me talk about this okay so every time i do these kind of live streams people stop ta start talking about women being killed out there and being abused so let me tell you how 
YouTube works. So the YouTube algorithm and how YouTube works, it mimics how tribally we used to live. The way we used to live was we used to live in small kit tribes and communities, uh, like close-knit communities with like-minded people, okay? So YouTube and all social media, media actually mimics that. So all channels on YouTube, all Instagram accounts, all Facebook accounts, whatever else is there, TikTok, I'm not on TikTok, but you get the gist. They all are speaking to a certain audience. It's a certain tribe. Now, because it's a little bit different on social media in the sense that like, we don't have people like on trees shooting arrows at people that don't belong in our tribe. Like it's, it's, we're not living that way anymore. In social media, it's open. Anyone can show up, right? But you have to remember that anytime there's a YouTube channel, there is a very specific target audience. And every single person of their YouTube channel is talking to that audience. If they're trying to talk to everyone, they're really talking to no one because you can't talk to everyone. Everyone is different, right? We're all talking to small groups. I am not qualified to be coaching women that are being killed. I am not qualified to be coaching women that are in like very crazy domestic abuse situations. That is not my expertise. That is not who I'm speaking to. This My audience is a very specific audience similar to me. Yes, a lot of my students and clients have childhood sexual abuse. They might have different trauma from parents or a lot of things like that, right? Things similar to me and they've gone through that and they're healing that. They have their own therapist, right? They're doing coaching with me in courses, but I'm not a police officer. I'm not FBI. I'm not like trauma certified in that way. Does that make sense? So I'm not talking to those people, babe. And, and this is important because if you just land on someone making school lunches, sorry, I'm using that as an example. Alina is obsessed with these, um, school lunches videos so her and i watch this every day after school her favorite channel is the family fudge by the way it's so fun to watch it she just loves it so if i'm showing up on the family fudge youtube channel and they make school lunches and i'm like women are being killed out here why are you making school lunches it, that doesn't make any sense does that make sense to you? Like really think about this for a second, okay? So I am not qualified to be doing inner work with someone that's in that type of a situation. And I'm not claiming to be, be that is not my expertise. That's not my target audience. This is a tribe of mostly self-aware Barbies and some million dollar babes, you guys know my work, where we are trying to overcome our overly adapted masculine ways and add more femininity, more fun, more joy, more sukun, more peace in our lives, whether it's to create more money, find a provider husband and have a traditional happy, joyful marriage, live a good life basically, right? So if I was qualified to save those people, help them, I'd have a challenge channel for them, but I, st I like to stay in my lane. You guys know me, I stay in my lane. I stay within the parameters of my expertise because that's what I feel most comfortable with. And that's what I'm supposed to be, like that's what I'm qualified to teach, if that makes sense. So you may just be on the wrong channel. If that's you, I'm sorry, but I'm not, I'm not qualified to be helping those types of people in that situation. Yes, exactly. I do have a BetterHelp link. Someone just mentioned it. I am affiliated with, um, sponsored by BetterHelp. They offer a 10% discount for the first month for all of my subscribers. I have personally worked with BetterHelp. So I they were actually the first therapist that I went to. Uh, if I ever needed to go back, if I had a family member, I would highly recommend them. I've had a very good experience with them. So when they reached out, I jumped on the opportunity to uh, work with them. And that link is always in my description box of any video in the last two years. If you click on it, scroll to the bottom, their link is always there. So if you need therapy, you know, I'm not a therapist, I'm a life coach. So you need to go and, and seek that out. Okay, let me see any more questions. Thank you, Heather Ann. I appreciate you. She said, oh my God, Arman, you are an outstanding young man. Thank you for sharing that, Mina. Thank you, babe. Hmm. 
<laughs> oh guys we all we have uh five spots left so i'm doing 25 for the group in houston you guys know my uh fifth annual new year intensive is coming up in january we are doing houston again this year i always do houston for the new year intensive it's called rebirth 2023 i'm going this week to look at the venue by the way finalizing it i already know where it's gonna happen i just want to go like take a look at it one more time um and so 17 people have signed up i'm gonna i'm gonna cap it at like 25 is what i think i can like really hold the container for so we have few more spots left there is a payment plan. There's also a pay in full option. I want to do something really fabulous as the pre-launch party the day before the pre-intensive uh, pre party. So it's going to be, the intensive is just one full day, but the, the day before we'll meet up for some something fun. We did Cartier this year, this last month, two months ago when we did it in Houston. I'm trying to do, here's the sad thing. I'm a little sad. What I was thinking we were going to do was this amazing burlesque show was which was the pre-party for the first intensive I ever did in Houston. And unfortunately, that place closed down. I really wanted to do that because the w one of the girls that came to the first ever Houston intensive is coming again. I have a lot of repeat people by the way, over and over again. Um she's coming, so I was like how cool it would it be to do the burlesque show again? It closed down. I'm so sad. I'm going to try to find something similar to that for our pre-launch like intensive thing. But if I can't, then we'll just figure something else out. But it'll be fun. Found your channel yesterday and I've been binging. You just got, you just get it. Thank you for all you do. Thank you, babe. Welcome. That You are just like a newbie to the channel. Uh, let's see. How, do, how, I'm not sure. I, I keep getting the questions and then they keep going. Uh, I think there's a way you can like slow it down. Yes, I totally resonate with Mina. I understand what she's saying. Okay. All right, I'm not seeing any other questions. Just comment. So I will let you guys go. This was so much fun. I'm so glad that I can be back to live streaming. Hopefully now that the younger two are back in school and like the house stuff is a little bit settling in. We still have a few more vendors like coming here and there that I'll be able to live stream more often. So next time I will be um, opening the chat up only to our members. That's That was the reason for having the membership. So to join, you can go scroll down on any video and there's a join button and you can sign up through YouTube. This membership is offered through YouTube. So if you email my team, they can't help you unfortunately because it is through YouTube memberships. So I love you and I will see you in the next one. Don't forget the links to Rebirth, the Houston Intensive, the, um, what was the other two things? The Four Levels Ahead Coaching and the Physics of Femininity. It's all listed in the description box. All right, babe.